Hey, how are y'all? Good.
First District Court of Appeals now in session. All who have business before this court draw near, give attention, you shall be heard. May God save the United States, the great state of Florida, and this honorable court. Okay, please be seated. Good afternoon. We have one case on the docket this afternoon, B&A Gourmet Foods versus Ms. Maura Abrey. I apologize if I mispronounced that. Uh, it's case number 22943. Appellant, um, you may proceed when you're ready. May it please the court. My name is Tracy Hyde. I'm here on behalf of B&A Gourmet Foods and Hartford. Uh, and at this time, I'd like to reserve three minutes for rebuttal. Uh, your honors this case is about what constitutes a specialty uh, in a one-time change situation um, in this case judge Kerr ruled that the one-time change doc uh, and I'll use the word I used in my brief needed to be a clone of the doc that she was treating with uh, at the time of her injury and while I appreciate Myers uh, emphasizes that it needs to be the same specialty. Here, Ms. Abreu suffered a crush injury to her hand, and her authorized doctor was a hand surgeon who also happened to be board certified in plastic surgery. And I think the key here is the difference between specialty and subspecialty. Um, Judge Kerr said it was of no consequence that it's the specialty, and the specialty was board certification. But she never quite clarified, and even when we went on rehearing, to ask her to please clarify what she meant by the exact same specialty, because the treating physician, Dr. Cortez, is board certified in both plastic surgery and general surgery. And he also has a subspecialty in hands. And that's an, an actual qualification that uh, a doctor has to go to a one-year fellowship, take a test, and actually get a certificate in hand surgery and it's help called us uh, understand how best to perhaps uh, create an algorithm for a case like this because what immediately comes to mind is what you know it's not this case but where you have a soft tissue back injury and you've got an orthopedist and uh, the carrier says well we've got a neurologist or we have a neurosurgeon or we have a chiropractor or we have a sports medicine person or we have a physiatrist all specializing in low back pain so how, what tests do we apply how, how do we go about um, evaluating this consistent with the statute well and that's just it and that's of course Myers and that's the opinion your honor authored and, and I I get that um, although as a defense attorney I would have been advising my clients the same thing if he was treating with an ortho surgeon I think you can authorize a neurosurgeon and that's the same specialty because they both treat backs obviously this court disagreed um, but I think it's definitely case by case where you might have other issues in the spine of uh, something that would involve nerves that would necessarily uh, necessitate the involvement of a neurosurgeon versus an orthopedic surgeon and so I know that it might create some confusion to um, try to create a test but it, it really does have to be case by case and to just focus on the specialty when Dr. Cortez operated on Ms. Abreu it wasn't as a plastic surgeon he operated on her as a certified hand surgeon and Similarly, the one-time change of Dr. Easterling, he too has an added qualification with a certification in hand surgery. And again, doctors can operate on hands, but these Here two- Here you would say the same specialty would be hand surgery. Yes, sir. And that's what we argued and in so the And so the analysis point would be there. Yes. Um, and I th and we, in our motion for rehearing, we felt like the judge was doing a disservice to the claimant by not allowing the search for the one-time change to be a hand surgeon versus a plastic surgeon. And in fact, the doctor that uh, Ms. Abreu requested at final hearing is a, is a plastic surgeon and he's board certified, but he does cosmetic surgery, um, breast reduction, tummy tucks, that kind of thing. Um, and so there wasn't even um, a consideration of him as 
a, a hand surgeon to a woman that had a crush injury to her hand. So I just think, and I, I pointed out in the briefs too, 44013 doesn't, identi- doesn't define specialty. It's got 19 definitional terms in 44013. Let me one, give but, you a, a hypothetical, and I, I know you were expecting hypotheticals in this yes, kind sir. of issue, but <laughs> let's assume we have a foot injury, not a hand injury. And as you know, podiatrists uh, do feet, as do orthopedic surgeons. Uh, so you, you're, the claim is being treated by an orthopedic surgeon. They are looking for a one-time change, and the carrier says, well, we've got this podiatrist. Would that be, even though the podiatrist specializes in feet, is that the same specialty? I think from a qualification standpoint, I, I don't think so. Because um, even though podiatry might need to be an MD, I don't know that there is... Um, the surgical component, uh, the qualification. I mean, I'll, I'll grant you I didn't look up podiatry before I came here today, but I, I, I see what you're saying, and I think it's case by case. I mean, here I don't think, the, I don't think Ms. Abreu is served by getting, a pla- getting another plastic surgeon. A, a plastic surgeon as to the cosmetic component of, of, the, um, of an injury, correct? Well, Judge Kerr completely disregarded the subspecialty. She said it was of no consequence. Well, let, let me ask you, because that's of interest to me. I, I didn't see that this had a cosmetic component. It was a crust injury, as best I could tell. It looked mechanical versus cosmetic. Uh, am I wrong about that? No, sir, you're not. Um, and, do- and Dr. Cortez testified that he operated on her as a hand surgeon, and he just happens to be board certified in plastic surgery. Um, but there was no component, or there was no plastic surgery component to her surgery, and in fact, Dr. Cortez testified that um, he didn't think she needed an, a plastic surgery. Um, Ms. Abreu testified that she wanted a plastic surgeon. I don't know that she ever really explained why, and I just suspect it was a conversation she had with her attorney. But well, uh, I, my recollection of, of her testimony was she said her finger, was, you know, looked ugly and was crooked, and therefore I believe she thought that a plastic surgeon could remedy that perhaps better than another hand surgeon. Um, I know Dr. Cortez said all hand surgeons are qualified to do all hand surgeries but I suspect that's the, where the cosmetic component came from. It may have been, and, but for the pandemic, there may have been a way to explore that further. Uh, the last time she saw Dr. Cortez was in February uh, 11th when he took the pin out uh, from the initial surgery that was done on January 30th and never followed up because, of course, that's right when the pandemic hit and she said she was called by the clinic a couple of times to come back, but she didn't because she was sick. Um, and then thought that the doctor's office was closed because of the pandemic and just never tried. Um, and so when, I'm sorry, Judge no, no, please finish. And so just when, when she was asked, you know, did she make any attempt to, to go back and, and see another doctor, she said, no, I'm waiting for my attorney to get me a new doctor. Um, and, but the, when the one-time change came, Dr. Easterling was, I mean, it's, it's not disputed that Dr. Easterling was authorized timely. They had just disputed um, his specialty. And he was not, um, and the appointment was set quickly. The one-time change came in uh, via petition at the end of February, and she was scheduled to see Dr. Easterling the next week. Um, And she uh, did not show, of course, on the advice of her attorney. So um, there may have been other opportunities, I say, but for the pandemic to maybe uh, have done something a little different. Or uh, had she kept the appointment, even if it was under protest, she could have at least gotten some feedback on maybe what other options she might have had. where is, different she, where, where is she in the course of treatment now? As far as we know, she has not seen a doctor since then. I mean, but the, I mean, there was a course of treatment approved by the employer. Yes, she was uh, injured in December of 19, right. and she had surgery in January of 2020. Two surgeries, one to put the pin in, and then another uh, surgery two weeks later to remove it, and that's been the extent. Is there just and there's just the one authorized provider? Yes. And the role of that provider now is just to manage post-surgery make sure that it heals and well he remained authorized she just refused to go back to see him right well i'm um, just trying to understand where these doctors fit into the um course of treatment that's been approved. it was pretty short i say that the accident was in december of 19 and, and the one-time change request came in february um and i can only assume it was because she wasn't satisfied with the surgery that dr cortez did initially um but that was so but he she's remained not looking off- for a doctor to redo the surgery. At this I'm sorry. Point. She's not looking for a doctor to redo the surgery at this point. I I really don't know. <laughs> she did. I and mean, other than in, her deposition, she didn't. What, what she's looking for out of treatment at this point. 
if, if her finger still looks like it did uh, on the picture that's attached to her deposition, yeah, she'd probably want another uh, surgery of some sort or whatever to, to fix it. I don't know what what that is. But that um, wouldn't be a functionality thing. That would be a, a cosmetic type thing. Right? Possibly. Which would require a separate a, a change or an addition to the course of treatment pursuant to a referral or... Potentially, but the case law pretty uniformly says cosmetic isn't going to be compensable if it's if it just it would make it look better. If it's completely functional and it just is not quite the way she wants it to look, I don't know that that would be compensable care that the employer carrier would have to provide. So we're not um, even talking about like the need to have a, a, a surgeon redo it to make it look better, um, assuming that it worked. No, because the only medical opinion and evidence is that of Dr. Cortez, and he's the one who did the surgery, and he's not, he wasn't recommending more surgery. Sure. But he never saw her back after he took the pin out, so he doesn't even know what her current range of motion is or, or functionality is. But um, what, what more would a, um, be it Dr. Cortez or Dr. Easterling, what, what else would they be doing at this point in the, as part of the course of treatment? I honestly don't know. Unfortunately, she never went to Dr. Easterling, so we never got the benefit of his opinion as to whether he could offer anything else for her. And I say the last time she saw Cortez was surgery. She didn't even see him post-op. Doesn't um, that, but that would, ultimately that question matters in the question of like same specialty, um, or maybe I should ask, don't you, do you think it's relevant um, what the, um, where Dr. Cortez fits in the course of treatment compared to where Dr. Eastling would fit into the course of treatment and if you can plug one in for the other without any degradation or deviation from that course of treatment, it should be okay, right? <laughs> one, would, yeah, one would think, I mean, Dr. Cortez testified he didn't think she needed plastic surgery, although admittedly by the time he was deposed, it was, I wanna say August of 2020, and he hadn't seen her in eight months, so he had no, or six months, so he had no idea what her functionality was at that point. But at the time he removed the pin at the February 11th surgery, he wasn't recommending any other procedures. Um, but again, he was a bit at a loss as well as by the time he was deposed, it had been six months since he'd seen her and he had no idea what her current condition was. Does the employee have to show that there would be a deviation from the standard of care or, um, or from the course of treatment or, should the, or does the employer have to show um, that it wouldn't be a deviation to have this other doctor? Um, I mean, the case law tells us the same specialty, and our argument is that the specialty is hands, um, not plastic, or general for that matter. And that was the other thing that came up with Judge Kerr is Dr. Cortez is board certified in both plastic surgery and general surgery, and she did not differentiate between the two when she ordered the one-time change be in the same specialty as Cortez. And we did a motion for rehearing, pretty much asking her to clarify, is it plastic or general or both? And she just summarily denied it. So in looking for a plastic surgeon who's also board certified in general surgery, uh, with regardless of the added uh, certification in hands, there wasn't anybody <laughs> uh, in the locale uh, near where claimant um, lived So in, uh, in her residence. So I just, I felt like uh, the employer carrier felt like the judge handed us an impossibility and that to serve the claimant best that the specialty should be the hand, not the plastic or the general surgery. I'm into my rebuttal time, so thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon, may it please the court. My name is Kimberly Hill and I'm here on behalf of the Appley, Ms. Abreu. Um, your honors, I think that you already did establish the algorithm for this issue in earlier case law, decisional law, wherein you indicated that it has to be a one-to-one -one change from specialty to specialty. Um, I, I think it's, uh, hand surgery is not a specialty. It's an add-on, it's an additional credential that three different types of specialists can accrue. Well, let me ask you about that. It, it would seem to me, logically, that what your client needed was a hand surgeon. Uh, and if she was treated by a hand surgeon, then the one-time change ought to be to a hand surgeon. And I appreciate the reality that there's not a board certification in hand surgery. There's a fellowship in hand surgery, which again strikes me as that's almost better than the real thing. And, and the reason I, I say that, and I want to ask you this, 
let's say, for example, the, uh, the carrier said, well, there's a surgery background here. I'm going to refer uh, for the one-time change to a general surgeon who doesn't even do hands. They do gastrointestinal uh, surgeries. Um, that wouldn't seem to profit your client, but it would be in the same specialty. Uh, why would that not be an argument uh, against what you're trying to tell us today? Well, because I think that you have to look to to what you you have already authorized in this case. So, for example, the claimant asked for a one-time change. If you're going to go with what the law says, specialty, and everyone knows a plastic surgeon is different than an orthopedic surgeon, the, and the subspecialty is hand, then you need to give, logically speaking, I would say you would need to give a plastic surgeon that has a subspecialty in hand. Well, why, why is the subspecialty relevant, though? If, you're, if you want to look at the broad specialty category, um, why isn't the plastic surgeon enough? Why isn't the plastic surgeon enough? Right. Because there's a lot of plastic surgeons that do other things, as, the same with orthopedic surgeons as well. Right. So, under, so I think under your reasoning, if there was an orthopedist that specialized in spine, then it would not be appropriate to do a one-time change to an orthopedist who specialized in a knee. That's correct. Correct. And but I think that reasoning, though, requires us to kind of drill down, or the JCC to drill down and look at the specific course of treatment, the injury, and perhaps the credentials of the, the physicians more than just kind of the label of the, um, the umbrella specialty itself, does it not? Well, no, because then that sort of recedes and muddies up the waters once again from where we were, and that was originally um, on the Myers case, for example, which was my case, in that case, the claimant was seeing orthospine specialists and the carrier offered a neurosurgeon. Both can operate on backs, so um, this court said, no, that's not good enough. You need to give an ortho, a one-to-one -one change. So if they're treating with an orthospine specialist, you need to give an orthospine specialist. I think if you take this case, then you can find other examples uh, out there where, you know, oh, this one has a specialty in feet, as, uh, as Judge Jay was saying. A podiatrist certainly does foot surgery, as does an orthopedic foot specialist. So um, in, in other words, so it starts muddying up the waters again and causing confusion. I think that it's much easier the way the court has already um, interpreted the statute. Specialty means the specialty of the physician the claimant is treating with. Why, though, and, and again, maybe it's the same question I asked a minute ago, and this is a standard definition. You can find a definition like this uh, probably across <laughs> the board, but specialty means uh, a specialized pursuit, an aptitude, or skill, or the field of practice of a specialty. Why wouldn't the specialty here be hand surgery as opposed to plastic surgery or general surgery? or even orthopedic surgery, it just seems to me, again, logically, that the specialty that we're speaking about is hand surgery. Why is that not the case? Well, simply because it's not a specialty. The statute doesn't say subspecialty of the doctor. It actually says specialty. And this court always interprets the statute without adding words in and, and, um, and the plain language of the statute. But Act I guess that brings me back to my, my question that we were just discussing. If, if we don't want to consider subspecialties at all, we're looking only at specialty, then why would not a, you know, an orthopedist specializing in spine be an acceptable one-time change for an orthopedist specializing in knee as a subspecialty? Well, I don't say that you don't look to the subspecialty. I'm just saying when you're asking for a one-to-one -one change, mm -hmm. you have to give a doctor that, that is in the same specialty, and then also I believe you would have to look to the subspecialty as well. It only makes logical sense. Uh, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I think that that makes sense. So just similarly, you know, you, you wouldn't want to give somebody an uh, orthopedist that, you know, operates on foots when, when, when they're, you know, operating on hands. I agree with that notion. But then, you know, this opens up the door for, again, no one knows what the de decisions are going to be coming out, you know, coming out of the court. Like, so, for example, it's been established now through three or four different cases that it's a one-to-one -one change. It's the specialty that they were originally treating with. That's the one-time change. So, but I don't think that any of those cases have really drilled down in the nuance that, that's kind of been highlighted in this case. So 
um, you know, in this case, the, the, um, the form, the DWC-25, Dr. Cortes listed himself as, for physician, a hand surgeon. And that was what the one-time change the EC authorized. So, you know, why would that not be sufficient or at least inform um, the decision on what is a, in the same specialty? Well, I mean, actually, I think the American Board of Medical Specialties sets forth what a specialty is, and a specialty is what the doctor um, went to school for and actually had the residency in. And in this case, you have a plastic surgeon who had a residency in plastic surgery and then got the extra credential by going to, you know, additional fellowship for the hand surgery, which is obviously something he it was wanted to subspecialize in. He does other things as well, but in, in this instance that, I'm sorry, Judge J. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. I've, I have a lot of questions. Uh, the, the American <laughs> Board, uh, and I have read through that, and that is certainly something in the medical profession that is well regarded, but the statute doesn't reference the American Board, and as I did a jet tour through some of the other states, some states actually reference the American Board. Um, our state has chosen, for whatever reason, um, not to reference it by name. Um, so given that, uh, Dr. Easterling testified that he specializes, his word, not mine, um, he specializes in hands, so how is he not, by his own representation, not a hand specialist? Well, he actually did say that, but then I don't know if you read the part where he went back and clarified because the um, defense counsel was saying, oh, so you're both board certified in hand surgery, and he said, oh, no, 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 That's, let, let me clarify this because there is no such thing as a board certification in hand surgery. There is no specialty in hand surgery. He did go back and say that. He, he did say, you're right, I, I read his deposition last night um, again. Uh, he, he did say there is no board certification, but he also said that there's a fellowship, which is, as you know, that's even a higher level of skill and training. When you go, you become a fellow. So he is a fellow in hand surgery, as is Dr. Cortez. So that, that om that's almost like, if, if used uh, Judge Ray's term, uh, even drilling down even more, uh, a refinement even beyond a specialty. It almost seems like subsumed within specialty is this notion that we can have subspecialties. Uh, so why is that not the case, uh, given what we're dealing with in this? Situation. Well, I guess I would just go back to the original notion that the plain language of the statute talks about the specialty, and this court previously drilled home the notion that it, it has to be one-to-one -one change, meaning, again, the specialty of the physician. The specialty of the physician, the, the fellowship is attached only to either a general surgery, a plastic surgery, or an orthopedic surgery. So it's attached to the actual board certification, as a you know, as an adjunct, as an add-on to to that board certification. Well, what about the? I mean, you, you, and I agree with you. We should always be looking at the statute. I think that's a great philosophy to have. Um, but should we look at the whole statute? I mean, this is one paragraph in a larger statute that all, from my reading of it, at least uh, in subsection two is focused on ensuring that you know, folks like your client. Um, get a certain continuum of care um, that has been approved and is authorized and I imagine has been accepted by your client as being appropriate for that injury uh, to make sure that all along the way that treatment stays at a certain level. So why shouldn't the question for the JCC be, is this one-time change deviating in any way from the course of treatment that's already been approved? So in your, in your client's instance, so she has a, obviously a severe need for, she needed the reconstructive surgery on, on her hand, and I'm assuming that she's at the point in the course of treatment where it's now monitoring and managing post-op. And, and so in, from that perspective, <clears throat> is there anything in the record that indicates that Dr. Easterling is not every bit as qualified as Dr. Cortez to do that post-op management for her particular injury as it fits in within the course of treatment that the employer approved and that your client accepted? 
Well, it's it's not necessarily post um, you know post op management because even Dr. Um, Cortez indicated that she might need an additional reconstructive surgery in his deposition. So there's we don't know Has where that she been is. Referred yet? I mean, is that been we don't know where she is authorized? because she hasn't been back to the doctor. And right, she didn't go back to the she didn't go to the doctor that had then been authorized for her to see. Right. And, and is there any indication that Dr. Easterling could not do the same examination um, as Dr. Cortez? And in fact, I think the record shows that Dr. Cortez and Dr. Easterling actually trade patients back and forth or had in the past for you know, for hand surgeries. So what what is the evidence that indicates? That this is a that the um, one-time change and, and authorizing Dr. Easterling would represent a deviation from the course of treatment or a degradation in the quality of care that your client has been receiving. Well, I don't think anyone is taking the position that it's a degradation in care. I think that the bottom line is that uh, you know the judge and the, and the reason the judge ruled the way she did is based on a prior case law. The reason the attorney asked for the plastic surgery versus the orthopedic surgery is because it's a it's a one-to-one -one change. I mean, that's what this court has said previously right, but in, in interpreting Myers, the there... statute. I'm not saying that there's a degradation in, in care. I'm just saying that that is, you know, the reasoning behind why the judge ruled the way she ruled based on Myers, which isn't that dissimilar from this case. In fact, to me, it's more or less on all fours, even though you have two different of course, you have two different um, specialties in that case as well. Both did spine surgeries. There's no question about it. A neurosurgeon does a spine surgery. An orthopedic surgeon does a spine surgery. There's really no difference there either other than, you know. You right, know. but there is no indication in Myers um, as to, well, what was it that, where, where was she in the course of, or she, he? I can't remember if Myers was he or she, but whether Myers was, uh, where Myers was in the course of treatment and the second doctor whether the second doctor was capable of doing the same service as the first doctor. That wasn't part of Myers. In fact, they made a separate argument. I mean, you, I guess, were involved with that. Um, a separate argument was made, and it had to do with, no, expand specialty to look at um, what was the ailment itself as opposed to looking at what the doctors can do. And that was rejected by Myers. But that doesn't mean that, we, that the test still isn't what is the continuum of care for the claimant and is the one-time change provided it's the they're doing the same thing within the uh, course of treatment is there a degradation in the course of care but that's not really the purpose or point for a one-time change of, wh of whether there's a degradation of care the, what do you the, think the, the, the purpose of a one-time the purpose change? of the one-time change is to allow the claimant and it's the only opportunity they get they get in the entire case to and you know they could have multiple specialties but they have to pick from which which one they want uh, to get the change from. So the purpose of the one-time change is if they're not satisfi satisfied with the doctor, the care, that they can get a new doctor. We don't know, again, where she is in terms of her care at this point because the care stopped once the carrier offered the one-time change to Dr. Sure. Easterling, and then it, everything kind of came to a halt. Right, but what do you think the primary concern would be for any claimant faced with that situation? I get one time to change. I don't like the doctor I have. But I'm afraid of what? What would be the num What do you think the number one fear is for a claimant if they ask for that one-time change? Isn't it that they're going to get a it, doctor it that isn't quite as qualified to do what they were getting already? Right. It, it, it could end up being worse, and sometimes it does, or sometimes it ends up being better. But in uh, terms of the treatment, though, mm -hmm. the, the skill level and the ability to provide the treatment they were getting before. Right. So why isn't that the focus in this analysis? Um, because, it, I, I mean, the focus in the analysis is really because, I, I, in, in reality, this is the only opportunity that the claimant gets for the change. So she should be able to get the doctor that she wants, the specialty that she wants within, you know, obviously within the parameters of the statute. But she doesn't get the doctor that she wants. That's for the employer to decide. Well, yeah, unless the employer doesn't give it right. timely, yeah. Well, I mean, I think we decided in <clears throat> Davis that the you don't get any doctor. You get the doctor in the same specialty. And the way it was interpreted in that case was that, you know, to avoid a situation where there is a doctor wholly unsuitable for the course of treatment. So kind of to piggyback on Judge Tannenbaum's question, if there was a hand surgeon that was designated as the original physician, why isn't a hand surgeon the appropriate one-time change for this particular course of treatment? 
Again, I just, I, I just go back to the same argument, and that is that's not the specialty. That has not been designated as a specialty. It's simply a subspecialty. And but I, designated by the American Board, um, because I think we all agree well, that the statute hasn't defined specialty. Well, I, it ha well, the statute doesn't define specialty, correct. It doesn't define specialty. But, um, I mean, in my opinion, this court has defined specialty as a one-to-one -one change. And that one-to-one -one change, to me, means whatever the specialty of the doctor is that the claimant is treating with goes you know, she gets the one-time change in that mm -hmm. particular specialty. Mm -hmm. I think I'm yeah. Do I have time left? Well, if yes, there's some more questions, we'll give you some. <laughs> okay. Can I just follow up? So, um, so basically, it doesn't, uh, I'm trying to understand your argument. So uh, uh, please correct me if I'm, if I get this wrong. Um, from your perspective, it, it only matters, or at least primarily matters, what that doctor's official label is or whatever the designation on their degree or whatever their formal specialty is, regardless of their actual skill level to treat the need of that particular claimant? That's actually uh, what I said earlier was that it was the specialty. So obviously we know that a plastic surgeon is capable of treating the hand surgery, you know, the hand, if in fact he has to spell, excuse me? But what if they're not as good? What if the, the Let's say your, your, your client got what she's asking for and it's okay, I'm entitled to another plastic surgery. Employer says, okay, we have one on the list and his specialty is feet. The specialty or feet oh. or cosmetic. It's just all he does is cosmetic. He doesn't dig into hands and do all that kind of stuff. Um, it, it, is your client gotten exactly what she's entitled to under the statute? No, as I was saying earlier, I think logic, logic dictates that it's a plastic surgeon that has a subspecialty in hand surgery and the carrier says, oh, we can't find one, which seems kind of illogical in light of the fact that we live in the huge metropolitan area in Miami, Broward County, West Palm Beach. Um, there's certainly a doctor within a geographical region that has the same certifications and specialization that, that, that Dr. Cortez had or has. Any other question? <laughs> Thank you very much. We Thank would just you. ask you to affirm. Thank you. Um, may it please the court, just a, a few items in rebuttal. Um, Judge Tannenbaum, Myers was a she, but I don't think, <laughs> it, it, it didn't matter. I apologize much. for um, I think the, the key is the definition of specialty, which we don't have, uh, which the statute hasn't provided us. And so exactly as Judge Tannenbaum indicated, um, it's this, the specialty in, in this particular claimant's case is hands, uh, and that Dr. Easterling is, an ortho, is a board-certified orthopedic surgeon that specializes in hands, and that's all he does is from elbow to, to hand. Um, and Dr. Cortez testified that 70% of his practice was hands and that only 30 percent was cosmetic and as pointed out by judge ray the doctor signed the dwc 25s as uh, as a hand surgeon and so and i think in here there's no requirement that a doctor be board certified but the only way to get to be a hand specialist is you have to be board certified in either orthopedics plastic or general and then you do the one-year fellowship and then you take the test so while a plastic surgeon may occasionally operate on a hand, he's not a hand specialist. And this, these doctors have taken the extra step of not only becoming board certified in a certain area, which is not a requirement for any medical doctor, but also taken the extra step, as Judge uh, Jay pointed out, um, to become a fellow and be a hand surgeon. And so I think in this case, the special that Dr. Cortez happens to be board certified in plastic surgery because that's what he linked his um, his hand certification to, he's also board certified in general surgery, and Judge Kerr didn't differentiate. So I, I disagree with, with counsel that we couldn't locate one because we were also, at least according to Judge Kerr's order, required to find a doc that was both board certified in plastic and general. Right. I just want to go back to, I, I think, to me, what's the crux of the issue, and Judge um, Jay asked about this earlier, is what is the analytical framework that we will be asking the JCCs um, to, to look at to determine whether one doctor is in the same specialty or another. 
Well, I think Judge Tannenbaum hit it on the head. It's the continuity of care that was given to the uh, claimant at the beginning of her injury. She had a crush injury to her hand, and she was authorized to see a hand specialist who also happened to be board certified in plastic surgery. I don't think the, the, the specialty in this case is plastic. The specialty in this case is hands. And so I, I do think it needs to be case by case. I don't, I, I, muddying the waters is not, um, it, this statute, I've been doing this 29 years now, this statute is not cut and dried. I mean, you, it's, it's not, but if we it, look at cases like Myers and just um, to make sure we don't have any internal conflict with our cases, how would you, just, under, under your, your analysis, how would we distinguish Myers? The specialty is hands, not plastic. It's, it, the statute doesn't define specialty, and so the, the, in, in this particular uh, injured worker's case, she needed a hand specialist, and that's what she got. And so I think in this case, the, specialist, the specialty is hands. And while Dr. Easterling did testify that you can't get board certified in hands, you have to take a fellowship and get certified in order to be a certified hand surgeon versus just a surgeon who might operate on hands. This was the extra step. So I think the line is where it's where the where Meyer said similar is not the same. This is the same. They were both hand surgeons and equally qualified to to treat Ms. Messabrew. Do you agree that there's a, an extrinsic um, limitation on what an employer can authorize in a, in a one-time change request, like? The, the hypothetical I um, threw out for uh, your opposing counsel, um, we have two plastic surgeons, so one that actually did the hand surgery for the, not just, I mean, the fixing it part <laughs> of, 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 the, uh, of the operation, um, and now she's in this course of treatment, sort of monitoring post-op, maybe she needs reconstructive, maybe it's additional care. Um, she asked for a one-time change. And instead of the, so the next plastic surgeon that she gets hasn't done hands in 20 years. Um, he just does, you know, faces or whatever plastic surgeons, you know, cosmetic type things or feet or something like that. Doesn't know hands, would have to look it up in a book to do it, but she's gotten another plastic surgeon and that's what the employer authorized. Would the claimant have a claim against the employer for deviating from the course of care and giving her something that is not consistent with the course of care that has already been approved? I think so, because I don't think you should be able to fall back on specialties of specialty. Um, and that's what I say, and, and you know, I'm defense, but we're all supposed to put benefits in the hands of injured workers who deserve it. And this, I think, this case did a disservice to the claimant by not having the one-time change be to another hand surge. So what would be required, though, in that situation is the, the JCC and well, all parties involved to look beyond the, the label of the specialist itself, but perhaps the training, perhaps the, uh, well, of course, the course of um, care that's been authorized, and then the training of the doc doctor, the skills, et cetera. So, I, I mean, that's a, that's a functional analysis that's um, more um, intense and robust than it just is, looking and, at the and, and maybe label. unwieldy in that five-day window. Uh, which I guess would be the same as if you could agree on an EMA, the judges are happy if the parties can agree on an EMA. Um, do, do they ever talk or agree on a one-time change? Hardly ever, which is mm -hmm. sad. <laughs> okay. Additional questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you to you both, both counsel. Excellent arguments today. The court is now adjourned. All rise.